Hello everybody and welcome to the beginning of a new playlist here in the Around the World Playthrough Challenge. We are playing as Babylon. We had kind of a rough time with Arabia as we got our Asia continent run started. Um, you guys will you know, hopefully have seen that on YouTube. Uh, we only had a couple episodes for that. Um, we got steamrolled basically by Alex, by Korea, and Egypt wanted in on the fun as well. So that was a rough time. We got down to pretty much our capital and that was it. Uh, anyways, we hopefully will have a nice, fresh start here. I'm excited for this. Babylon is a fun sieve. Uh, before we dive too deep into the start here, let's talk about Hammurabi's abilities. So, uh, you do have to play Hammurabi a bit differently than other sieves, and keep in mind his strengths, his weaknesses, and how you can best use them to get your victory in condition. Uh, Babylon is probably best tailored for science victory, although it's not a traditional science victory, you have to go about it a bit differently. So let's read through his abilities really quick. We've got Ninu Ilu Serum, which is when each specialty district except the government plaza is constructed for the first time, receive the lowest production cost building that can currently be constructed in that district. You get that for free, which is awesome. And then you receive an envoy when any other district is constructed for the same for the first time. So I believe that would be like a dam or an aqueduct or something that doesn't have a building, right? Uh, and then you have Enuma Anu Enlil, which is Eureka's provide all the science for technologies, but you get minus 50% science per turn. So you want to focus more on getting as many great scientist points as you can. And one of the things we're going to try, which is a strategy you can do with Babylon, is trying to get the Great Library. Because the Great Library will give you a Eureka anytime another civilization earns a great scientist. So you can just end up getting random Eurekas all throughout the game just by having the Great Library. Plus, it gives you all the texts, if you don't have them all researched yet, gives you all the texts for the Ancient and Classical Era. It gives you Eurekas for every single one. So with Babylon, that would completely flush out your tech tree for those two areas, which is crazy. Uh, they have a unique unit called the Sabum Kibitum. And it's basically a really good warrior scout because it's got extra movement and extra sight extra combat strength against heavy and light cavalry, which is nice, especially if you're running around scatting with them and you run into barbarian horsemen. That can be very helpful. And then, of course, they do have a unique building, which I actually really like, the Palgum. It's a unique water wheel or water mill, whatever you want to call it, and it gives you extra. It gives you plus two production, plus one housing, and then plus one food on all of your freshwater tiles in that city. So if you happen to settle next to a river, say on a really good resource, you're also going to get extra food on top of that, and you're going to have tons of growth because of the housing and the extra food. If you stack that with some other abilities, like uh, having a religion with Feed the World or something like that, and the unique um, religious building that gives you extra housing, that could be pretty cool as well. So definitely very interesting abilities here with Hammurabi. Let's see what chat's saying. What if you built a preserve in the capital? Uh, yeah, that'd be nuts because <laughs> they give extra food too, right? Uh, then you have a preserve in the capital. <laughs> what if you build a preserve in the capital? Then you have a preserve in the capital. <laughs> That's like a dad thing to say, a very sarcastic dad thing to say. There's so much breathtaking woods near wherever he settles. Um, I mean, this, this the appeal here is decent. We had another save file that would have been really good for Earth Goddess, but this one to me was more interesting. Um, this start we picked out of the few options that we saved because it has a lot of... Um, variability right you guys have the ability to settle in multiple locations look at all the fresh water we've got tons of fresh water tons of options to settle on um so as far as your playthrough of this game you have options and and different ways you can go about playing it uh and of course that's part of the around the world playthrough challenge if you're new to it you can join us on discord where you can download the checklist and get the game keys and save file where you can play this exact same game you can also play it at your own difficulty level. We play on Emperor, but you can also play on Prince or on Deity, whatever you prefer. Um, you just have to put in the exact same settings, city-states, natural wonders, and the game and map seeds. That's all provided to you in Discord. So if you're new, be sure to join us on Discord. There will be a link down below the video as well. Long day at work, can't brain. <laughs> That's okay, don't worry. Neil, are you playing with corporations on? Yes. Yes, we are. I tried to have it on with Arabia, but we had such a hard time with that start. It, we didn't even get the chance to try it. So we've got corporations on for this one. That's another reason why I like the start is because we have Mercury here. And if we do get a corporation 
Is it a corporation or a monopoly that will give us the extra bonuses? Resource industry effects. Let's see. I can't remember. I think it's just with corporations that you start to get those bonuses, right? Or is it when you start to get monopolies? But either way, um, Mercury is going to give us extra science in the city, plus 15% science in the city. So that will help negate part of our deficit on science per turn and enable us to uh, do a little bit better. Uh, hopefully that will aid us in our science victory quest, which is probably what we're going to go for here. Just started a Vietnam game with that on. It's ridiculous. Nice. Oh, industry gives it. Okay, cool. Very good. Very, very good. So it goes, does it go, I can't remember. Does it go corporation? No, it goes industry, corporation, monopoly. Is that how it works? I'm still so new to the game mode that I don't even know. I'm looking at the, at the website for more info. I don't recall. Uh, I think I've got it pulled up still in the, still in the Civilopedia. Maybe not. Industries, monopolies, and corporations. Two of the same luxury type resources completed the currency technology. They have the opportunity to establish an industry around that resource. Resources owned by city-states also count toward this requirement. If the player is suzerain of the city-state, this is done by using a builder's charge on top of an existing improvement on any one of the luxury resources. Only one industry is allowed in a city at a time. Industries grant particular bonuses to their city based on the type of resource they improve. Okay, so it's right at the beginning then, which is cool. And then later on, I guess, monopolies will give you extra tourism, right? And uh, extra gold. Industry, corporations, monopoly. Cool. Monopoly is a separate thing. Okay, gotcha. That's when you own a majority share of all the luxuries, right? Cool. Well, we're all here for one thing, and that's for Civ 6 gameplay. So let's get started, shall we? Industries and corporations are one mechanic. Monopolies are a separate thing. 60% of the resource. Okay, so you have to own 60% of it. Sweet. Monopoly. Do you guys like playing the board game Monopoly? It's a it's a family killer. <laughs> One time I played with my sister and my parents, and she, I kid you not, my sister flipped the Monopoly board off the table. She was so mad, and we had been playing for like two hours. It's one of those games I loved playing with my grandparents as well. Anywho, let's get started. So, um, as far as settle locations are concerned, we've got a few different options here. The game is putting us on some interesting uh, suggestions. They suggest settling here, or here, not even on fresh water, which is stupid. Up here on the wheat, which I don't want to do because I want to improve it, over on the stone. Close to a front. So this is interesting. The advisor sometimes gives you some interesting insight, right? So new luxuries and strategics nearby. That's good. This site has fresh water, strong yields within three tiles, strong yields adjacent to this site, likely to gain new resources, and close to a friendly site. What does that mean exactly? Close to a friendly site. Demerks, welcome in. How's it going? Hope you're doing well. We only go and buy all the property and then see who has the most money when we finish. Oh, gotcha. So you play it a little bit differently, huh? So this one's actually not good. I don't know why they don't... Um, I don't know why they suggest it then. This one's actually looking like the best start as far as the game suggests, which is interesting. This one has four positives. This one has six. Huh. Doesn't suggest this tile either. I'm I'm kind of inclined to to go with the game suggestion here because I don't always do. It'd be kind of interesting to see what the game would give me, especially since it says that there's strategics nearby, and us uh, um, likely to gain new resources nearby as well. Uh oh, Burley. Sorry, I do have a filter on. Held the message. Big dog. Being a family ruiner, my family Monopoly meme has a quote, something like, no F you, Grandpa. Grandma is cheating. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I kind of want to allow this, but then I don't know. I'll allow it. Enjoy that comment, everybody. <laughs> what do you guys think? Should we go with the game suggestion and settle across the river? Or should we settle somewhere else? 
I mean, this is only one tile off. I could settle here and have these three 2-2 two -two tiles to work. Okay, here's something I actually want to do. I need to move my warrior first, but which direction? If I go this way, I'll reveal more C, because there's coastal tiles there. Or I could go north. We're actually close to the north, so that would just take me towards Tundra. But I can only travel one tile if I go south or across the river. I think I want to go this way. Oh! Well, we've got a good campus spot. I'm glad I went that way. Okay. I think if I settle here, I can still do the campus, and I can do it here as well. Uh, it'll be easier to reach if I settle on this spot, and it's a turn one settle instead of a turn two. It does put me closer to the Mercury. Oh, it suggests down here, too. Huh, interesting. Campus or holy site. I'm thinking that is the best place before I looked at what the game said. Oh, yeah? Family friendly denied? <laughs> well, good thing you guys don't see those comments on YouTube. This also puts me closer to stone and wheat to be able to improve those and get the Eurekas. So I think I'm actually going to settle here. I think that's going to be a good spot. You guys can, of course, settle wherever you want, but I'm going to take these three 2-2 two, two tiles, put me close to honey, wheat, and stone and closer to that good campus spot. Cool. We have made our decision. Uh, let's go into animal husbandry so I can improve that honey really quick. And unfortunately, I have to hard tech those because I cannot get Eurekas for those. Um, and we got the tiles to work here. Perfect. Uh, let's get... I think I'm going to go straight for my sabum kibitum because it's only one extra turn of production and it's a stronger scout basically and it'll give me error score for the unique unit i don't even think i'm going to produce scouts to be honest we got more mountains this way that's promising lots and lots of river too and we got silver up there hmm that town next to the honey looks like a really solid start location yeah i think so the two two tiles in the capital as well, yeah. Calling in, calling it troll iron in that campus spot. Oh, I hope not. Well, it's just the plains. I don't think. Do they put iron on plains, or is it, does it have to be on a hill? Oh, we got a barb camp up here. Awesome. Oh, there's so much silver up here. <gasps> We've got a silver city. Silverado. Desperado. Wow, and some deer up there. Interesting. We could get a good tundra city, too. And it looks like we can settle, like, here and then settle up there in the tundra and get the volcano air score. Hmm. Something tells me you already knew that there was silver there, like you're playing the same game, Mythrock. I'm trying to find this, uh... I'm trying to find this encampment. All right, we're one turn away from growth. Let's put a turn into another Sabum. Now remember, we're on seven seas. Oh! oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> wow. That's fun. Take a look at that. Ha ha ha. We just got the Eureka for astrology. So that's completed. Awesome. Looks like I'm getting a coastal city over here. That'll be one city that doesn't have a palgum. Oh, boy. Hey, thanks for the follow. Burly Gamer, appreciate that. We have a Norse neighbor. Oh, that's a nice backyard you got there, pretty much. Oh, he's uh, he's actually kind of close here. Oh, and he's going to take that camp, too. Darn. Diddly darn. I got to be careful that he does not get too aggressive on me. 
Oh, there's a barb camp. That one's being taken, too. Uh-oh, do we have a lot of neighbors? Do we have a lot of neighbors? Oh, that's a city-state. Cool. Let's go meet them, shall we? So it looks like I've got to settle east first. Got to set up some boundaries. Oh, I forgot to turn off from the Ibum cut. Uh, I guess that's fine. We could use the extra support. First, meet on Mitla. Getting some extra science from you. Thank you. Oh, I forgot we had a governor title. Oh, crap. I'm playing so terrible. Um, let's go ahead and get Pingala in the capital. Forgot I met the Hermetic Order. I didn't realize I hadn't done that fall already. Oh, no worries, dude. No worries. So we got a Great Barrier Reef right next to us. Nice. Um, what we're probably going to do... Yeah, I think we're going to settle on this Plains Hill. We're not going to be able to aqueduct or anything, which is unfortunate. Uh, but that will give us uh, the ability to, to work all those Great Barrier Reef tiles. And it does act as a reef, right? So I believe it does give us the yields for uh, campus as well. Too bad that uh, cotton is there, or else that would be a, a really nice campus. So if I settle there, then I can settle like on this stone and get a 2-2 two -two base there. Then I need to come settle this way. I may just settle on the desert so I get another... <gasps> excuse me, another silver tile. And the air score, too. Oh my gosh, my nose is so itchy. I'm so sorry. Oh, more silver. Yeah, we got to settle there. I didn't realize... Oh, it doesn't act as a reef? Well, that's too bad. All right, they took out that camp, but that's all right. I, getting the first meet on Mitla, I think, was better than... than uh, what was I going to say? Than getting that camp, I think. Okay, we've got uh, some interesting land here, that's for sure. Gotta make sure he's not getting too close to me. That is best. What you doing there, buddy? Alright, let's get foreign trade going. We got animal husbandry in two turns. Government or slots here. Let's do that and that. Lovely. Yeah, that is stupid. It's called the Great Barrier Reef, and it doesn't act as a reef. Good reef. It's gonna keep you there for now. Ooh, horses. Oh, we got horses. Cool. Right next to our uh, bees. Thankfully, horses did not spawn there. So we got another 2-2 two -two tile there. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, uh, let's work on pottery. So we can improve that wheat. Just gonna keep these guys near my border, just in case. Don't worry, dude. Just chill. I guess I don't want to make him too angry at me from the start, right? That extra movement on that unit is very helpful, I think. But we definitely need to come settle this way first. Five turns on our settler. Yeah, we got bees right there. <laughs> so, Tomorrow's again. Bees! Because we did have a bee start, but we didn't keep it. All those 2-2 two -two tiles. Very helpful. Just wait until I get the Palgum going, too. Mm-hmm. Guess I could explore a little bit. Let's go see what else our Tundra has in store for us. Looks like there might be a Barb Camp up there, too. And the uh, this guy would be best suited for that, I think. Lots of next turning here. All right, let's come settle. And all right, what should we do first, a campus or a holy site? If we build our first campus, we'll start getting um, 
great scientist points pretty quickly. Plus, this will give us air score for being plus four. I think we want to focus on the campus over the holy site. Let's go for it. There's more mountains. Hmm, wow. Quite a bit of mountains up there. Ah. Are you up there, my friend? There it goes. Great bath, that's fine. Not worried about that. Air score for settling on the desert and close to a neighbor. Alright, let's work on mining. We shall... I think we shall put down a campus somewhere. At least place it. Um, it'll have to be that. I think this desert tile would probably just be the best one for it. And then we'll just work on your monument. So now we've got bees, mercury, and silver. What does silver give us? Let's look at that list again. Silver gives us plus 25% gold yield. Mmm, very nice. Where is your home? I'll get a coastal city here soon, don't worry. What are the strengths for the Babylon culture? Um, an aging hipster, there's not much strengths with uh, Babylon. There, there's no strengths, like unique bonuses that Babylon gets for culture. Um, oops, clicked on the wrong person. His is all about science. Silver gives you gold? <laughs> it's like that spell from Skyrim where you can con convert your iron into gold, right? I always did that spell. That was always so much fun. We'll settle there. Then we'll come up and settle in this tundra as well. It's kind of a straight line here. Or I could settle on top of one of them. Because there's so much up here. Settle on that silver, and then I might be able to settle on the coast here if I can push his loyalty back enough. That would be ideal. And I can maybe come down this way as well. Along the coast. I think my next settle will be the Great Barrier Reef if I can, uh, to get the air score for that too. We're, we've already secured a normal age, which is good. That is good. Campus in six turns. So we've already gotten astrology and writing, which is good. Uh, if I get a trade route, I can instantly get my industry going. Build a quarry. We'll want to get that one. Kill three barbarians. Yep. Mine a resource. Minor resource, quarry, irrigation. Um, there's a couple Eurekas we can get here. I just need to get a builder soon. That's the positive aspect of trade. Yeah, definitely going for a science win. The world. I think we're definitely going to go for science win. We're just, we just got to go about it a bit uh, in a bit of a unique way. I swear there's a barb camp up there somewhere. I'm trying to be a bit isolationist here. I don't want to meet too many people, if I can help it. There's lots of hills and then there snows. I guess the barb camp isn't up there. Hey, where'd you come from? <gasps> Ooh. Okay, goody cut. Hopefully it gives me a Eureka. That'd be nice, yeah. That's mine. Sweet. So we got our first campus down. It was plus four, plus we got a free library out of it, so we're already getting extra great scientist points, which is awesome. Nobody else has gotten scientist points yet, so we're the first ones, which is great. Great, great, great. Okay, let's get another settler going, I think. And then hopefully soon we can gold buy our builder. How much? How long would it be for builder? Five turns. 
I can get a builder and a trader out here to get some more Eurekas. You know, let's get the builder, actually. Let's hope this gives me a Eureka. Oh, it gave me Faith. Well, at least that gave me our Pantheon. Sweet. Um, what should we start hard teching? I'm probably not going to be able to get a, a sling or a yeah, get a unit killed with a slinger. So we'll just hard tech archery. You can come back home. Maybe we'll try to kill that scout. All right, Pantheon time. Ah, we've got religious settlements available. Wow, that hardly happens this late. I guess people just didn't want to go for it. Religious settlements would be nice. Earth Goddess is available, but I don't think we've got great appeal. Um, Divine Spark is available, which would be an interesting one as well. That would give us even more uh, great scientist points. That might be actually very good. What do you think we should value more? Should we value an extra city more, or should we value extra great scientist points more? Because, to be honest, we want to get um, as many great scientist points coming in as possible, right? God of Craftsmen, uh, I don't think that's one I'd lean on for this game. Maybe for a more generalist game, like some civs that aren't so science-focused. Like, Babylon is a science civ, right? You want to focus on science as much as you can. Uh, you want to play to their strengths. I really like the idea of Divine Spark, actually, and getting extra great scientist points. We're going to get three now once we get to, if we do get Divine Spark here. Gosh, I don't know. I've got to weigh extra great scientist points or free settler more. Hmm. Decisions. Aging Hipster votes for Divine Spark. What say you, peeps? Oh, I almost forgot to tell you guys. You know how I've been getting new merch lately? I've been ordering my merch so you guys can take a look at it. I uh, finally, today, got my stickers delivered. Look at that. We'll look at it more on a break here, but um, if you guys are interested, I do have a merch store. We can buy some fun stickers, um, some mugs. I just added a new mug design on there. It's a Cheers mug. And uh, some t-shirts and sweaters and stuff. Yeah, Divine Spark does pay off all game. That's true. Tamori says Settler. Settler from Burley. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. I think because we want to... I, I really want to play more to the Great Scientist game. I think I want to go Divine Spark. Gotta be the city, says listen here. Hmm. I'm torn. You guys are torn, too. It's pretty evenly split. What do we say? I need a majority vote. <laughs> Spark is full game and scales up, right? Uh, yeah, so every, every campus you get a library in is going to give you an extra great scientist point. So that, that stacks quite well, especially for us as Babylon. You could even settle that northmost city to get another good campus location with those mountains. Yeah. This one right here. Yeah, let me mark that before I lose that spot. That's a good spot. I could even come up here and settle on the snow for Ariscor. This is kind of a n crazy city, but it also has a plus four campus. So, hey -oh. Because your raw science per turn is going to be very weak, you need to go spark and beeline the Great Library. Yeah, I want to get the Great Library. I'm thinking we build it right here, unless that's floodplains. I don't know if I can build it on floodplains. Let's look it up. Uh, you know what? This video is going to end here pretty soon. Let's pick our Pantheon, and then we'll discuss it on the next episode. Um, I think I want to go Divine Spark. I think that's going to be fun. Divine Spark. Sweet. And uh, we're actually getting closer to a Golden Age as well, which is nice. Let's fight that dude. Sweet. 
All right, the video is about to end here, so I'm just going to go ahead and pause the timer before it goes off. Um, if you guys are watching on YouTube, be sure to like and comment on the video. Let me know how your Babylon games are going. Hopefully you enjoy the start as you play along with us. Uh, down below the video, you'll find the links to Discord and to the checklist. Uh, go ahead and join us, and you'll find all the links, or sorry, you'll find all the game keys and settings you need inside of Discord. Uh, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next episode. We're getting raided by Van Bradley. Bye! <laughs>